So, <clears throat> good lord. We're here at the end of all things. We've talked about Tekken so much that it's ridiculous, man. We've analyzed and evaluated so many of these games and looked at them with hopefully like a bit of a deeper lens of understanding of what made each one good, why they were successful, and why they were casually beloved in several ways. So we're here literally on the day Tekken 7 ends. We just finished also watching the Tekken 7 finals. So obviously the biggest story is that the game is done and potentially the last tournament ever. And Tekken's kind of a weird series where most of its player base just adopt the next game and the game that came before it is just lost to time. Very few situations have people gone back to the previous one because of next game not being good enough. And that's like, you know, we saw that happen with Tekken 4 where people kind of went back to Tekken 5. No, I don't think people went back to Tekken 5 after Tag. Tag 2, it, it felt like you, you hear some heated arguments about Tag 2, but 7 came so quickly. It was within a couple years that Tag 2 existed. Now you got Tekken 7. The biggest story I got to talk about with Tekken 7 is sort of its misunderstanding, where not many realize that the home release version of Tekken 7 when it came out in 2017 was not the first version of Tekken 7. The game has had so many different versions of it throughout the years that it's kind of bonkers. And most people don't realize that. I, I was there at EVO to see the reveal of Tekken 7 back in 2014, where we first saw the teaser trailer for Tekken 7 and then the arcade version came out like later in 2015. That that was the first version released and as i've mentioned multiple times as well i watched quite literally direct feed capture from a little arcade called green tekken for many years they would actually stream the early versions of tekken 7 way ahead of time right as the game would continually get updated between its arcade release the first arcade release much less the later versions faded retribution which is when akuma is eventually added these guys would be streaming this game for years dude for literally years and then as many people here would know, you would you would get the Tekken 7 you know, not as a vanilla version, not as a first version of Tekken 7. No, we are like technically four versions deep into this game. Tekken games that came before this, like obviously we got Bloodline Rebellion for Tekken 6, which is a big change to the game. But Tekken 7 had already gone through several massive iterations before we got the home console version. And of course the home console version had like this big story mode, which was massive and arcade endings and all this stuff that was not in the arcade version, right? To be real, we just played as a version of vanilla Tekken 7 through emulation and Jin was playable. But would you believe that when Tekken 7 launched in arcades in its first version, Jin was not a playable character. He was a boss mode. So you had to unlock him somehow by playing through CPU by no shit fighting Jin and people would look at his move list and stuff because he was not an in-game character yet. It would be a later version of Vanilla Tekken 7 where they eventually like add him to the game and even some other characters like Devil Jin and stuff like that. That isn't optimal. I fucking know. I've been doing this shit for less than not like 90 minutes, man. The fact that I can do this. That should be a fucking Christmas miracle that I can do that shit. So yeah, like there's a lot of history to T7 as a game that goes way, way, way beyond what we all know the home version to be. And yeah, the home version goes through a ridiculous amount of changes too. I was arguing this that I think Tekken 7 might be one of the most consistently and consecutively updated individual fighting games ever, rivaling other games potentially like the Guilty Gear XX series, which goes all the way to Accent Core, which lasts several years or Blaze Blue or something. I think it's up there where the game would continually get updated all the way to like 2021 or something like that. Maybe even beyond that, because we got patches, you know, even around 2021, I'd say. XX goes back to 02, final version 2014. Yeah, okay, so Guilty Gear might still take the top numb. For a lot of fighting games, 7 is one of those games where we just got massive updates after massive updates after massive updates to console version, to multiple different versions after that. So for the majority of large-scale Japanese fighting games, this one is up there. That's a big thing to understand. The vanilla version of Tekken 7 didn't even have rage drives yet. It just had rage arts. This is a drastically different game than what we all eventually play. 
But by the time we get the game when it comes out, it's fairly feature rich. For as much as people don't really like the story mode of Tekken 7, I kind of like it because it allows you to inject yourself into epic moments, right? You get to see this cool cinematic thing and then all of a sudden oof, camera sweeps in, fight. I'm like, damn, this is badass. I think one of the best demos for a fighting game ever is being able to play the Heihachi versus Akuma fight, where you're literally like doing a big interactive cinematic battle. Those are where Tekken 7's story mode shines. And to me, those elements, when they do happen in Tekken 7, are so sick that it makes up for the stupid narrative and the goofy ass journalists and all the dumb shit that meanders in between. It's not great, man. But then when you get to those moments and then now there's the this big epic cinematic battle between Hayachi and Kazuya, I think it's awesome. And it's set up for one of the coolest, in my opinion, boss rages we have on the channel and one of the most successful ones. And it's great. It's it's genuinely awesome. Oh, let's fucking go! One, two, three, four. Ah! Ah! You lose. Let's talk about that in general, right? Like Akuma's in Tekken 7. By default, probably one of the bigger propagators of this game's like hype factor. I remember watching, and I think it was in a Tekken Finals event, right? Whether or not I was watching it on stream, I don't remember, but there was a big Tekken Finals event. People were going at it. It was for like some 2015 version of Tekken, 2016 or something like that. It was still in the vanilla version and they announced the, the update to Tekken 7. It was called Faded Retribution. This is like a year before it comes out, anywhere close to consoles. And no shit, there's a mystery character. He's, he's sitting on this pile of rubble in New York or some shit. Yeah, no, no, it was in Japan specifically and Akuma's there. And that's easily one of the most mind-blowing moments ever. does Akuma end up being like a reality in Tekken 7? Here's my presumption on the situation. Street Fighter Cross Tekken exists. The relationship between Capcom and Bandai Namco is supposed to continue to another game called Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Instead, Tekken Cross Street Fighter is inevitably delayed because Tekken Tag Tournament 2 not doing so hot. Also, Street Fighter Cross Tekken not doing so hot. Tekken is kind of looked at as this like, okay, well, this isn't exactly a franchise that'll carry anybody right now. Everyone's big mad. There's still talk of a Tekken Cross Street Fighter game that will exist at some point, but it's kind of in limbo until the point where we actually get a Tekken 7 announcement. We thought there was going to be a Tekken Cross Street Fighter. There's screenshots of this game. There's like actual information about it, it would take until the late 2010s for them to even acknowledge that it's in development still, but you still have to wait. So anyway, that game potentially could exist. We, we, we had Tekken, Crow, get out, get out, get out, get out here. <laughs> <laughs> but Tekken 7 happens. What happens in Tekken 7? Oh, Akuma's in it. They make Akuma part of the story, which is, in my opinion, brilliant. Probably one of the best marketing decisions they could have made because still at this time, there's a lingering funk from Street Fighter Cross Tekken especially and the relative low sales of Tekken Tag Tournament. But Street Fighter Cross Tekken's funk will continue to haunt Capcom for a long time and also potentially the Tekken franchise. What's the smartest thing they could do? They can risk it all and make their own version of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Tekken Cross Street Fighter, but instead they don't do that. They pull back and they're a bit more reserved and they're like, hey, we just want Akuma because Akuma's pretty popular, right? Give us him and we're gonna make him part of the story mode. So instead of going big, and making their own big game, they go small and actually inject Akuma into the story. The first time Tekken gets a true crossover character, it would take Soul Calibur like 20 years before this shit and they've been putting characters in their games all over the place, right? But now Tekken enters the crossover bill and weirdly enough, the crossover ends up potentially being the thing that launches Tekken 7 into absolute stardom the same way that it does for Soul Calibur back in the day. It's a huge hit. Akuma becomes directly a part of the marketing for Tekken 7 when it comes out and it does pretty dang well, man. And he's sick and he's cool. Like Akuma is technically like the last boss of the game. It's amazing. 
Took a long time to walk. <laughs> wow! That means you were a bitch before. What the? You shouldn't have said that. Oh, you, you no. a bitch, Heihachi. Oh, you were you a, a bitch, bitch Heihachi. By the time Tekken comes out, it's a fairly feature-rich game and everyone's pretty happy with it. The online is concernable. Ultimately, the reason why I don't dedicate a ton of time to it, it's a bit rough, but still is a very fun game and people are kind of into it. So that's not to be the end of the story because Tekken 7 goes on to do so much. This game eventually goes on to be the best-selling Tekken game. It beats out the most successful fighting game of all time, practically, which is pretty much Tekken 3. And there's no way any Tekken is gonna ever beat that. And I remember even talking to these developers, like Mike Murray and Harada, about the success and popularity of Tekken 3. Even they don't don't think they'll ever be able to hit it. So this game eventually does it. So how the hell does it do it? Number one, they move into their DLC relatively quick. By the time we're at the end of the first year of Tekken 7, we get big hints at future DLC for the game. The big one was at the end of the year, and I was at this event for like a Tekken Iron Fist, whatever the heck they called it at the time. We got the first big teaser for a Tekken DLC character, and it was the protagonist for the latest Final Fantasy. <laughs> It was Noctis. As much as a lot of people don't like this character, made an appearance in the latest Tekken World Tour, Noctis now ends up being a huge element of marketability for the game. It feels completely random, it feels out of left field, but now Tekken has quite legit become a Soul Calibur in several ways because we are venturing out into guest characters and they are sort of out there, dude. Believe it or not, I've heard this also from other representatives at Bandai Namco over the years, and it was several years ago, and it's maybe changed, but probably not. Not. Noctis is the most popular DLC character in the entire game. Like he goes on to sell a shit ton. And I do kind of remember that this game does well, but it doesn't seem to get launched into the stratosphere of like, dude, we have a Final Fantasy character and a freaking Street Fighter character in Tekken. It's insane. This game starts to like reach this level of like awareness and casual awareness that Tekken really hasn't had in a long time. People are excited about it. And Noctis does super well. You go bam, and then you go bam, and then you go one of these, and you go, uh, uh, and you go, eh, or, eh. maybe, right? Move forward a little bit. The crazy crossovers would continue because eventually more characters are added. It comes into perspective. The game gets better and better. Update wise, Tekken Bowling is added to the goddamn game. A lot of people are asking for that. For some reason, it doesn't have online. I don't know why it doesn't have online. The package of Tekken is getting much better. And this is the first time a Tekken game would actually have a seasonal release of characters. So this game is just getting increasingly better and better and better over time. And the roster is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we get a huge announcement. I don't know if Geese is like a level announcement of that is equivalent to like Akuma or Noctis, but for the sake of like virality, Geese came out before Noctis? Am I just, am I just, no way. No way, is, is my, is my head cannon that messed up? It was Geese first? Geese was Evo 2017? Shit. I thought he was the one year later. Noctis was the end of 2017. Geese was like four months earlier. I could have swore it was later, man. Hang on a second. July 2017. You ain't wrong, dude. Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. Tekken already set up like a precedent of crazy character stuff through Geese, which is why Geese was like even more like, whoa, this is actually possible. We got Capcom versus SNK, bro. Check it out. I got Capcom versus SNK at home and it's like Geese versus Akuma. Noctis to follow up Geese and shit. It's pretty nuts. And it's clear that they take a huge note from Soul Calibur and it's working because the hype and the virality that's being built from like huge audiences blowing the hell up. I swear, I have never been in a room or an Evo, where the announcement of a character almost made the goddamn roof blow off. And when we were sitting at Mandalay Bay, ready for the Tekken 7 announcement when, when Geese was announced, I swear, man, they could have heard that stadium from fucking orbit. It was really crazy. Oh, the fuck out of here! Oh, the brother! That was a huge moment of virality for Tekken that really helped. And then Noctis just elevated that even more and it made more websites report on it and all this crazy shit. Not to mention, another thing that we have to account for Tekken 7 being wildly popular and end up being a huge game for the franchise, much less one of the biggest fighting games ever, is its esports and and sort of competitive level. And I'd argue that not many people would just be aware of like Tekken esports, much less like competitive Tekken from years before. While a very niche thing with its obvious 
these figureheads and everything. It isn't like super wildly popular in the same way that not many people would be aware of like Soul Calibur competitive and stuff like that. How like players from France were some of the best players in the world and all this cool stuff. There's not like a level of awareness of this. However, Tekken 7 kind of changes that. The moments of like slowdown, the moments of all of these epic final round, final hit, Tekken introduces this crazy slow-mo thing. It's just amazing for spectators, right? Tekken 7 becomes the ultimate spectating fighting game. In a moment where obviously Street Fighter isn't doing good, and we'll, we'll talk about that, Street Fighter might not end up being the best fighting game to watch at the time and looking kind of samey. Tekken is all over the place, man, and the way people are playing this game is truly unique. Nobody is playing a character individually the exact same. I think at one point, yeah, like Tekken viewership is eclipsing even even Street Fighter, which is crazy because Evo is pretty much a Street Fighter tournament, right? And this is where I feel like Tekken as an esport and people aware of Tekken as like an overall esport is actually benefiting the game in some way. All these devs want their fighting games to become esports, right? They all want this shit. Until we start talking about like the early era of Street Fighter 4, where esport and people are becoming professional Street Fighter players is kind of a topic of conversation, even amongst casuals. This starts to happen to Tekken a bit around Tekken 7. And this is where we get to like the super unique stories of Tekken, where it's actually a worldwide game. This is truly a game where we're gonna get people from all over the world with their own individual unique stories, where it isn't just like just Korean players that are amazing at this or just Americans or just Japanese players or anything like that, right? Or just Euro European players. No, this is really a game for like everybody, which is where we'll talk about things like Pakistani Tekken eventually becoming one of the greatest stories of fighting games ever. To conclude our little like, you know, conversation about the popularity of T7 and how that changes over time, out of left field announcements like Negan are just so bonkers that they make headlines. Now it feels like something like a Walking Dead character. It's like, what are we even doing, man? Like, who's, who's the next character in this fucking game? Is it young Sheldon or some shit? Anybody can be thrown into Tekken. And here's the thing, here's where I have to like, start thinking about the behind the scenes of Tekken. At this point for several years, giant figureheads of Tekken like Harada are essentially executives at Bandai Namco making massive decisions. They're also working side by side other massive developers of other fighting games that are doing very well with similar results for their game plan. And that's Sakurai with Smash Brothers. So Sakurai and Harada are kind of working hand in hand because Bandai Namco through Harada's tenure is making Smash Brothers games. And how is Smash Brothers getting all of its like relative great buzz and shit while well, they're adding guest characters to their game. They have a history of putting this stuff in there and making it crazy hype and adding natural virality to the game. So I would just like to think that from all the behind the scenes of obviously Harada and Sakurai, these big Bandai Namco games, even though technically a Nintendo game for Smash, they're sort of seeing how things are working out. And Tekken takes that memo the same way that Soul Calibur did back before. And now it's like, if Negan is in Tekken, then anybody can be. Now people are just excited to tune in to see like, what the hell can happen next in Tekken? So that ends up being a huge casual bait, right? In the same way it built success for Smash 4 to Smash Ultimate, an absolute massive casual bait and awareness for the game to just lead to its overall popularity, man. What? 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 Akuma, what? what? Uh, did I just did I, did I just look at Akuma's smile? I think I did. Overall, Tekken really becomes the fighting gamer's game. There's another company that is creating fighting games, still, and has a history of wild success and being the absolute pioneer visionaries of the genre. And at the point of Tekken 7's release, they are exactly the opposite. Street Fighter is likely in the biggest rut it will ever be compared to even something like a Street Fighter 3 new generation. Street Fighter is suffering so bad that I truly think the game doing as bad as it does and having all of the negative response leads to a huge influx of people that are looking for a really good fighting game. And Street Fighter V was obviously not it. Street Fighter V was the game you told your friend about to not buy because it was the worst shit ever. And in fact, still to this day, regardless of what Street Fighter V turns into being a great fighting game, people don't care. The influence of Street Fighter V's bad launch goes on to 
quite literally haunt Capcom and force them into making a good game with Street Fighter VI. It was so bad that I can be one of the only few people that'll tell you about it outside of the several influenced by the horribleness of the game, that it truly was one of the darkest times for Capcom fighting games outside of the actual dark times in the early 2000s. So Bandai Namco and Tekken take full advantage of this. Akuma's better in Tekken. He doesn't look like a flower. Tekken's just a better fighting game. It's got more skill in it, right? People just like Tekken more. And it's just a better game, to be real. The casual impression of fighting games is so skewed away from whatever the hell Capcom's doing that Capcom sucks their bullshit and a lot of people are looking for something and clearly Tekken 7 is doing all this really cool shit at the time. The scales now shift. Bandai Namco is there at the perfect time, the perfect spot, and they pick up a lot of people that are looking to get into fighting games, and Tekken 7 is the perfect game. And I can speak from experience and just interacting with these audiences at the time through streaming and making YouTube videos, Tekken is popping off super hard. And Street Fighter V has a very, very difficult time finding its legs. And for how many people that were introduced to fighting games from Street Fighter IV and Marvel III and things like that, these games were bigger than ever. And at the time, Tekken wasn't doing specifically great. The shift happens. And now, clearly Tekken is a goddamn banger and Street Fighter is balls. As we describe what makes Tekken 7 so big and why it is what it is, it isn't just one thing. There's so many things that build into what make Tekken 7 successful and great. And I think the last thing I want to talk about is that worldwide nature of the game. I hear from several times that from the developers that Tekken's a series that sells really well in, in places that aren't just the West. And by the West, I mean North America, right? In Japanese devs, they call the West North America. And for the majority of fighting games, that is true. Like, NA is where you get a lot of your sales. I hear from Harada over the years how big Tekken is in places like Europe, like the EU region. It's kind of that way consistently for the majority of their games. And this sort of carries forward, where in other territories, Territories, Tekken 7 is the first game ever to be on PC. So you have to start thinking and accounting for the fact that this series has never had a port outside of consoles. And at this point in Asian territories, consoles aren't that big. They're doing okay. PS4 does relatively okay, but mobile and handheld is massive. I think it just also benefits the fact that this game gets a pretty good PC port that helps benefit the popularity of it in other regions like Asia, and especially when we start talking about places like Pakistan. The home run story, the absolute insane thing of Tekken takes place where this is truly a worldwide fighting game. This isn't a fighting game just for like we said earlier, East versus the West, like the Japanese versus NA or anything like that. No, no, no. This becomes a franchise that this isn't just for you or you. This is for everybody. And everybody's showing up. The pool of people that are good at Tekken, much less checking out Tekken, is wider than it ever has been. It feels like we're actually reaching levels of Tekken 5. And believe it or not, like around this time, the late 2010s or so, I believe Tekken 7 actually eclipses the sales of even Tekken 5, which is impossible. It's like, whoa, dude, Tekken 5 was so big. How are you going to beat Tekken 5? It actually beats it. The true miracle story of this game, which is why it's easily one of the most unique fighting games and some of the... I, I love just revisiting the idea of this. Uh, you get this little FGC, like this group of people that are just really good at Tekken. And forever, you wouldn't think Pakistan is like a caliber of player that will just whoop ass. The people would come from anywhere and be okay at the game, you know, you, there's no immediate evidence that they're gonna come and whoop ass. And they come out and they start whooping ass. And it's just the story of the year. It honestly becomes one of the greatest fighting game stories there is because the thing that we all want is this sort of like vision that just imagine that there's some guy like going to work and he just does whatever, like he works at a museum, does something completely unrelated to fighting games, but he goes home and he just grinds Tekken. You don't hear anything about him. You never, you know, post online. You do, there's like very little interaction with these people, but suddenly they also have an FGC and they built a group of people that are also like really good at the game and they just train with each other, like practically in a bubble, it feels like. And nobody knows about them until they show up. And all of a sudden they're like, who are these guys? What? It's literally like an anime story arc. I swear to God, you can make a movie out of it. It's in my opinion, the greatest aspect of Tekken. Arslan Ash, and now also being the Tekken World Tour 2023 champion, 
going on to be one of the most dominating players of the game. Pakistan is like the greatest story of Tekken 7. It's this moment that I don't know will ever be recaptured again because suddenly these players showed up out of nowhere, jump scared the entire community in a game that was blowing up and more popular than ever before. And now right when that was happening, this absolute swan song story of these players that are actually gods at the game show up and they, they're consistently good, man. I think what makes Tekken 7 truly a huge game going on to sell super well and now is the best selling Tekken game of all of them is all of these little things building up. And the number one thing to realize is that this became a fighting game for everybody, not just one region, not just another. As much as Pakistan gets obviously a whole bunch of recognition for many years before that it was korean players korean players dominated tekken no way anybody's gonna take that from them right it's called the korean backdash bro that changed with tekken 7. this is actually a fighting game for the world not just an individual player or somebody else this is truly a worldwide fighting game and i don't think that can be said about practically any other fighting game i've covered on this channel それだけだ。この世に存在するべきではない。愚かだな。風間陣。<音楽>